Hey folks, welcome to another Water Trek 360. I'm down here in Grand Cayman and I'm about to do the record of Kitty Wing. Let's go have some fun. There were three Kitty Wakes commissioned into the United States Navy. The Kitty Wake that we'll be looking at today was built by the Savannah Machine and Foundry Company, launched in July 1945 and commissioned in July of 1946, classified as the ASR-13, one of nine Chanticleer-class submarine rescue and support vessels. The Kitty Wake is the most popular wreck dive in Grand Cayman, supplanting the Oro Verde once she was sunk. It's always busy with multiple boats visiting daily. In 2017, Tropical Storm Nate pushed her into the nearby reef and knocked her on her port side. She sits in 70 plus feet of water with the top of her starboard side reachable at around 30, 35 feet. The bow points in a northwesterly direction away from the beach. Follow the little diver in the lower left, showing where you are on the wreck. It was a little overcast at the beginning of the dive, so the video was a little darker than I had hoped. Still, the visibility was 70 to 80 feet. As mentioned, there were three kitty wakes. The first built in 1917 as the USS Rayo was changed to the kitty wake serving the US fishing services from 1917 until 1940 when she was again transferred to the Navy as the YP-199. The second kitty wake was built in 1938 as the Curlew and acquired by the Navy in 1940 and served as a minesweeper slash patrol boat until decommissioning in 1946. moved just south of the bow and headed down to the port side and moved under the superstructure towards the stern. As you can see, she is wedged right up alongside the reef. This kitty wake was 251 feet long with a 42 foot beam and a draft of 16 feet. She displaced 1,780 tons and up to 2,193 tons when fully loaded. She had a crew of 115 and was initially fitted with one 3-inch gun and four 20-millimeter cannons. She had a top speed of 16 knots. Kitty Wake had a long career. She supported operations in the Caribbean until May of 1949 and then moved to Norfolk, Virginia, where she supported divers and salvage operations, helping to free the BB-63 Missouri, the battleship, which grounded on Thimble Shoals in Virginia. Throughout the 1950s, she supported sub-activities, including the N-598 George Washington nuclear sub, when in 1960, the sub launched the first successful test of a ballistic missile from a submerged submarine. One
Once past the main superstructure, I came up along the midsection where the main A-frame rigging structure is still in place. In 1961, she was moved to the Mediterranean, returning in 62 to Norfolk. In February of 1963, she rescued 12 Cuban refugees from the Jose Maria. She continued to support sub-operations in the Central and North Atlantic, the Mediterranean, and Caribbean until 1967. port side, you'll find the diving bell. It's always fun to take a peek inside. We made our way to the stern, which had the aft end of the boom frame structures. In 1966, she helped in the salvage and recovery of the German submarine High S-170. It is a common mistake to see her, the High, listed as S-171, that was actually her sister ship, the Heck, formerly the U-2367. Both were classified as Class 240 submarines. The High, originally the U-2365, was scuttled on May 8, 1945, northwest of Anholt in the Kattegat part of Operation Regenbogen. In June of 1956, the U-2365 was raised by the German Federal Navy and commissioned as the High on August 15th of 1957. In September of 1966, she foundered on Dogger Bank in the North Sea during a heavy gale. 19 of the 20 crewmen were lost, making this one of the worst peacetime naval disasters in German history. She was raised on September 19, 1966 from roughly 155 feet of water and broken up. The requisite tourist propeller swim through is a must.
Things weren't all great. On April 23, 1984, the Kitty Wake collided with the attack submarine USS Burgall at Norfolk, Virginia, while the Burgall was moored in the pier behind her. The maintenance on her main drive motor was improperly rewired and caused her to go in reverse when she thought she was going forward. Of course, I had to get the classic Stern nameplate video shot. We then penetrated the wreck, heading forward towards the bow. There is plenty of light through the myriad of holes and cutouts. This video was shot with an iPhone 14 Pro. My one complaint with an iPhone is that in some conditions, particulate matter in the water impacts its focusing capabilities. Like any large wreck, there are multiple paths you can follow within the ship. Stay aware of your surroundings, watch your head, and get some training before penetrating any big wreck. There are five decks or levels for divers to explore. On this day, we are only on the top three. If you wish to penetrate into the bottom two levels, it is required that you have an advanced certification. The Kitty Wake is one of the few Caribbean wrecks that has access to such a long penetration path through the wreck. This is thanks to the removal of many of the internal hatches. On this run, we went from the last stern hatch all the way to the midsection, finally exiting at the pump. In 1986, she assisted in the Challenger recovery efforts, actually finding and retrieving the black box. Exiting the funnel stack made for some great video opportunities. From May until August 1968, the Kitty Wake was part of the search operations for the missing attack submarine USS Scorpion, the SS-589, in the mid-Atlantic. Once out, 
we again headed forward, re-entering behind the forward bridge. On December 5, 1989, during the Navy's Trident missile tests in the Atlantic, the USS Kittywake provided surface support. Greenpeace sent vessels to protest this exercise. During the protest, the Greenpeace vessel rammed the Kitty Wake on the aft port side. The Kitty Wake, in return, rammed the Greenpeace ship while shooting water down the engine stack, disabling the vessel. Kitty Wake was decommissioned on September 30th, 1994, and struck from the Naval Vessel Registry and put into mothballs. Making our way through the internal portions of the bridge, we exited near the bow winches. She was acquired in November 2008 by the Cayman government for use as an artificial reef. There were delays in her planned sinking in June of 2009. MARAD, the U.S. Maritime Administration, and EPA had to make it environmentally safe. She had additional openings cut into her, providing safer access, and many of the doors and hatches were removed. Some $40,000 later, once ready, sinking again was delayed due to severe weather. This was pushed until January 5, 2011, just off Seven Mile Beach. I swam up past the bow, which gives a great view of the wreck. This is one of my favorite wrecks. It reminds me of the Keith Tibbetts in Cayman Brack, only smaller and in better condition, having been down only 13 years, and notwithstanding being pushed around by Tropical Storm Nate. I then headed back along the now raised portion of the starboard side. I am surprised that I didn't see more growth on her. Her decks are still pretty clean. If you're in Grand Cayman, I highly recommend this wreck as well as the Oro Verde and even the Doc Polson. Check them out. She's located in a national park, so you are not allowed to touch or remove anything. And I believe wearing gloves is also not permitted.
I finished up at midships. I turned and then headed back up the funnel stack and then back to our mooring line. Well, I hope you enjoyed this detailed video on the wreck of Kitty Wake in Grand Cayman. I know it's a little longer than my usual videos. Do watch for two other videos on wrecks from the Grand Cayman, the Doc Polson and the Oro Verde. They'll be out shortly. Uh, anyway, my friends, stay safe, plan some new dive adventures, and until you see me the next time, go explore, get wet!